everybody to our webinar for Veronica Foods and Stay and Go. If you could just uh, first of all let us know if you can hear the volume okay. So in one of your chat boxes just let us know that we're coming through loud and clear on your end. Um, and if you type that in as well, just in case you're not hearing it, you won't know I'm saying that. <laughs> so my silence, so it looks good. Um, my name is Sarah Grace, so I'm here on behalf of Sun and Grove and the Yellow Wellness Institute. So we'd like to welcome you to our, our first two webinar for Veronica Foods. Um, I'm also joined by Andrew Burgess and Tim Smith from uh, Stan and Grove and they'll talk uh, through their sections a little bit later. But before we move on with the session, I just wanted to cover a little bit of um, housekeeping. So we might just need to reduce the volume perhaps on the microphone, we're saying it's a little bit loud. Where we start. Okay, just a tiny bit and it'll be fine. Yeah, thanks, Abby. So, a little bit of housekeeping from your end, all of the microphones on your end are just automatically muted because you're in um, attendee mode, and that's just really so we can block out any background noise. But feel free to send us any messages or questions in the chat box. We will hold all questions until the QA section at the end, and Abby will collate them. And if you have any other technical issues, please put them into that box as well. Um, and that's all. So if you've got any questions, let us know. But without further ado, I think we can commence. Hand over to Tim. Great. Thank, thanks, Erin. Thanks to everyone who's on uh, the webinar today. Um, we've been to you from a place called Geelong, which is just uh, to the west of Melbourne in uh, southern Australia. Um, we're hoping to be at our Olive Grove today, but unfortunately in Australia the internet speed is a bit slow. so. Um, we had to be close to the city, so um, hence the location in a boardroom, um, sitting in the office. Um, for those who don't know us, I thought it um, might be useful to just tell you a little bit about our company and our relationship with Veronica Foods, which extends all the way back to 2004, and then we might um, talk a little bit about some of our um, new initiatives and where we've got to with our olive leaf tea, which we're very excited to be bringing to uh, the USA in the next, uh, we're arriving in the next couple of weeks, which is super exciting for us. So, our company is, um, our company name is Boundary Bend uh, Limited. We're, we're olive growers, and our business really started in 2000, and, uh, sorry, in 1998 when two young guys decided to uh, plant olives in Australia uh, against conventional wisdom. If you're looking at the slides, we're sort of looking at slide number three. Um, so we can just progress through to there, so it's just caught up on our screen as well. Um, so our parent company is Boundary Bend Limited. We're, we're Australia's largest olive farmer, and we've got about two and a half million olive trees um, on three main groves in northwest Victoria. Hopefully, you might have seen some of our olive oils coming through Vic, uh, Veronica Foods over the last um, well, over the last. 10 or so years. Um, we started working actually with Veronica Foods in 2004 and um, had a terrific relationship with them from that time. Um, so we have our olive groves here in Australia, we're a vertically, uh, vertically integrated business and um, more recently we started growing olives also over in California. So we now have uh, around about 500 acres of olive groves in various stages of development um, in California and we've got a processing mill in a uh, place called Woodland just near Sacramento. So um, bringing some of our Australian expertise I suppose um, to the US olive industry as well and uh, trying to make um, trying to make some wonderful olive oils over there. Um, Abby we might just move on to the next page. Thank you. Um, so as I mentioned our business is um, vertically integrated. So we start from the very start in the, in the olive cycle um, with our own olive tree nursery which is actually located on the same site where we are today at a place called Geelong. Um, in this nursery we bring the cuttings from our um, mature olive groves up in uh, northwest Victoria. We bring small cuttings down and we propagate those cuttings into baby olive trees. Um, it takes us about 18 months to turn them into trees that are ready to go into our groves. Um, in the nursery we have um, around 30 or 40 different varieties of trees. There's about 14 main varieties that we're producing here in Australia and on our groves, um, including Piquile, Coratina, Coroniki, Hodgie Blanca, um, Frantoio, Legino and many more. Um, 
So those trees start off in our nursery. We then take them to our grove operations. As I mentioned, we've got three main olive groves, um, the largest of which has got a little over a million trees, um, and the smallest of which is around 350,000 trees. Um, we then harvest our olives and process the fruit on site. Um, we've got our own um, harvesting technology called the Colossus, which drives straight over the top of the olive trees, can pick about 100 trees an hour, and does a terrific job to enable us to get the fruit off the tree and into the mill in around about um, four to six hours from, uh, from the time that the fruit's left the tree and turned into oil. Um, we process olive oil. We've got our own laboratory and R&D team um, based actually here in Geelong. Uh, you might have heard of Modern Olives Laboratory, and that's uh, that's our lab team here, um, who are now one of the leading um, olive um, research and testing laboratories in the world. And we have a small uh, Modern Olives facility, uh, lab facility, also at our office in Woodland. Um, so our main product um, for many years has been extra virgin olive oil. Um, we've been selling that into the US for some time, both, uh, both through Veronica Feeds and also more recently under our Cobham Estate brand. Um, and in recent times we've expanded into a number of products, which on that little chart in the bottom you can see um, 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 a highlight called Specialty Ingredients and then Packaging and Distribution. And um, we might just flick over to the next slide. and. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So over the last few years, we really um, decided to um, progress our business in a number of different ways. Um, first of all, from a sustainability point of view, we, were, um, we had a look at our olive farming operations and um, starting to understand really what we were doing on the farm. So in a year where we might produce 10 million litres of extra virgin olive oil, we're producing around 60 million kilos of other outputs on our farm that we haven't really been utilising. And by other outputs, I'm talking about olive leaf, olive pomace, um, olive stone, um, waste water, various um, various items. And as a company, I guess we're really, um, really keen to do as best as we can for making our business um, sustainable and ensuring we're doing the right thing for, by the environment. And so we started investigating what the uses for these various products would be and we're very fortunate that through our laboratory we've been able to really understand and test a lot of the materials that are coming through and we've become one of the world's sort of leading um, assessors and testers of anything to do with olive antioxidants. And in the course of that um, in the course of that investigation we started looking at the leaf and that sort of led us to where we are with the tea and with some other leaf products that we're, we're producing today. I guess with everything that we're doing we, we sort of set some foundations which um, we think enable us to produce really high quality products and um, guarantee the quality and efficacy and this extends from our olive oil all the way through to all the new products we're producing in. and when it comes to olive leaf tea this is sort of a foundation promise that we make to our customers and the first is our products are 100% estate grown. Now in the case of tea, every bit of olive leaf that's contained in our tea blends um, is sourced from our grove. Um, we are using other ingredients, which the team will tell you about today, which aren't from our farms, but anything to do with olive is 100% sourced from our farms and traceable back to the very origin being the row in the farm where the leaves are actually harvested from. Um, we have world-class olive expertise. Our business is all about olive stuff. Um, we don't actually do anything else and so that makes us a little bit olive centric or eccentric or whatever you might want to call it but um, but we certainly know a fair bit about olives. Um, in all of the products we're making we've developed our own proprietary uh, technology and processing methods and when it comes to olive oil um, there's things that we do that are um, unique to our business which uh, really help us maximise the quality and, ex and quantity of olive oil we're producing when it comes to tea, we've developed our own proprietary olive uh, leaf harvesting um, system that enables us to pick uh, pick leaves really quickly and transport them off to uh, the tea making factory, um, which we'll tell you about um, more specifically in a little while. Um, and we have our world leading R and D and testing uh, facility in modern olives, which gives us a huge number of competitive advantages. It really helps us understand before we produce any new product what the competitors' products look like in the case of tea or olive things, what their antioxidant profile of the leaves might be, 
uh, what the quality might be. We do everything from microbial testing through to um, quality and taste testing and all those, everything in the middle. And Amanda will talk a bit more about the taste uh, parts of that a little later on. And we think if you combine all of those things, um, our estate grown operations, our world class olive expertise, our proprietary technology, and also our R and D, we can we can guarantee the quality and efficacy of the products coming out the other side. Thanks, Abby. Um, so that's uh, so that's a bit of background. Any questions about the business? Um, please feel free to visit our website www.boundaryben.com, um, and we'll kick off with the tea. So. Um, as I mentioned, we started um, started a really sustainable initiative about two years ago where we started looking at all of the various products we were making and we realised that in the course of um, producing and harvesting our olive trees, we were producing an enormous number of leaves that we weren't utilising um, and we started investigating what other people around the world were doing with olive leaf and what the traditional uses of olive leaf were in the Mediterranean um, uh, Mediterranean, um, what do you call it, area, <laughs> um, and probably not the best word, but that'll work. Um, and we really came to um, came to understand a little bit about the unique health benefits, which um, the olive leaf is the source of the antioxidants that end up in the olive fruit, which end up in your extra virgin olive oil. And Sarah will talk a little bit about that today, specifically about the unique antioxidants that are contained in the leaf and their their health benefits and um, over the years we've seen um, people in the Mediterranean diet using this thing called olive leaf tea and we really didn't know too much about it and then um, in more recent years we started, we've been travelling to countries like Japan and Korea where, um, where green and herbal teas are um, actually quite common and started to see olive leaf tea becoming a little bit trendy in those, uh, those markets and really becoming known for its unique health benefits. And, so we started looking into that a little more. We started doing some trials and we partnered with a, um, a green tea making facility here in Australia. Um, there's one of J uh, Japan's leading green tea manufacturers that actually have has, a, has an olive mill only a couple of hours drive from one of our olive groves. And um, a bit like us making Southern Hemisphere oil here in Australia, they actually make green tea in Australia. So that which is produced counter seasonally to the green tea over in, um, over in Japan and they market it as a new season fresh green tea. Anyway, they have around about six months of the year where they have downtime in their mills and we started doing some trials with them working on production of olive leaf tea and uh, the process for us is reasonably simple. We actually harvest some of our terrific fresh leaves. Um, over the course of the last couple of years, we've been able to identify which varieties um, perform the best which leaves are best to utilise, is it the trees from the leaves from the side of the tree, the top of the tree, um, what time of year um, the leaves are actually at their most supple form that actually go uh, perform best in the tea making process and what we can do in the mill to actually really extenuate the, um, the quality of the, of the leaves. And for those of you who might have seen olive leaf tea before, you tend to see a few different things. First of all, some people tend to just take leaves off a tree and dry them and call them tea and um, our product is very different to that. We actually use a full Japanese green tea censure process um, which involves um, steaming, drying, um, fine cutting um, to actually get the tea to maximise uh, its maximum quality and maximum antioxidant content. And There's a little chart on the, on the graph there that sort of explains the various steps. So, we we'll start off with the leaves. In, in the case of the tea that we're sending over to today, it was harvested in uh, eight, the start of April 2018. Um, we take the, tree, the leaves directly from the farm. Um, we send them over to the green tea factory. Um, it takes us around about six hours, um, six to eight hours to get the leaves from the tree into the green tea making process. Um, the leaves, once they hit the mill, they actually get steamed and rolled. Um, the steaming is really important in the process because it helps, um, first of all, um, halt the cell breakdown in the um, in the leaf, and then or the enzyme breakdown, and secondly, helps break down the cell walls and release the flavour and the antioxidants from the um, within the leaf. So that's a really important part of the process. The leaves then get dried and rolled, um, and then 
after they're dried and rolled and down to around about 2%, 2 to 3% moisture, which is a, a stable level of moisture in the tea, they actually get fine cut and sent down to um, cold storage where we hold them until we turn them into tea bags. Um, Andrew, is there anything you'd like to add on there? Uh, I just think, you know, part of our um, you know, emphasis on quality with our tea is just how quickly, like with our olive oil, how quickly we take it from the tree to the um, to the uh, tea making factory. Uh, we have you know, specially built bins that we use that are water and air cooled. So as soon as they come off the tree, they go into a bin, and it, that water cooling takes all the field heat out of the uh, out of the bins, and then they're transported straight to the tea making factory, where yeah, as Tim said, they're immediately steamed, which halts that breakdown of the trees and locks in all that goodness. Uh, the tea, which you know you don't really see uh, anywhere else in the world, especially with olive leaf tea. Yeah, yeah. and um, so the next slide is why um, stone and grove olive leaf tea, and I guess we tried to summarise here for you a couple of key selling points. And if you're talking to a customer in store or trying to train your staff in store, why people might buy our tea, and we're not the only person in the world that makes olive leaf tea, but certainly we think it's um, one of the better ones that you'd find. So first of all, the tea, teas are produced from the fresh leaves we harvest in the spring and autumn. As I mentioned, the, the teas that will be arriving in the US uh, later this week or next week um, will harvest using olive leaf that was harvested in April 2018. Um, all of that olive leaf comes from our farms in northwest Victoria. Um, second point is that they're picked and processed using a traditional Japanese green tea method. Um, when you taste the olive leaf tea and when Andrew takes you through the tasting, um, you can certainly note some similarities between the flavour of olive leaf and a, and a good quality green um, Japanese tea. Um, all, of the, all of the olive leaves are fully traceable. Um, you know, the, the way the world's gone today with food, um, people really are keen to understand where their products come from and we think it's really unique that Unlike when you go to the supermarket and you buy um, a set of tea bags, you would have no idea where it comes from. And tea like olive oil is one of the most adulterated products in the world. Um, in the case of our olive leaves, we know exactly where they come from. We know exactly where they were picked. And if you're interested, we can take you down and have a look at the farm where they were actually produced. Um, we've developed a number of proprietary herbal tisanes. Um, Andrew and um, Sarah will take you through these in more detail. but. The idea here, I guess, was to um, to do two things. One is olive leaf tea um, by itself is quite a strong flavoured product, and we thought um, whilst delivering a number of health benefits, there might be people that are actually interested in a, um, in a more broader type of flavour. So we started working with a, um, one of Australia's and um, one of the world's leading um, master tea blenders, um, actually located here in Geelong as well, and she travels all around the world, including to the US, and um, speaks at tea events and gets hosted in Japan and Korea and Indonesia and various places and treated like a queen um, for her tea knowledge. Um, she helped us come up with these terrific tisanes. Um, with the growth in interest in health and wellness, we decided that we really should leverage the antioxidant content and also look at some other unique health um, attributes that we might be able to bring into the tea. So we've We've sort of developed the range around a number of wellness lines and the team will take you through those today. Um, finally, olive leaf tea in its um, um, individual form is naturally caffeine free, um, which is certainly a benefit for people that are looking to consume it at all times of the day. Um, it's rich in these potent natural antioxidants and Sarah and um, Sarah will talk to you about in a minute. On the right hand side of that slide you can see um, the antioxidants per cup listed for the various type of products that we're uh, supplying. So for straight olive leaf tea there's around 20 to 40 milligrams in, a, in an average cup of tea of total antioxidants and unlike taking a supplement, a cup of tea is not a, um, not a standardised dose form so depending on how you actually make the cup of tea, how long you leave the tea bag in, um, what temperature the water is, that number is going to vary and that's why we've included a range there. But 20 to 40 milligrams is quite a substantial amount of antioxidants and um, Sarah might tell you about how that compares to, as an example, 15 mils of olive oil as a, um, as a standard daily usage, if you know that number. <laughs> um, sure it, it's a different type of um, antioxidants, but it sort of looks, if you look at 
what she is for. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you have a look at the olive um, leaf tea, having about 40 milligrams per 200 ml, that it, a good high quality extra version has between about 58 and 78 uh, milligrams of phenols per 100 ml. So it's looking like about half the strength or a bit less maybe. Yeah. So you, you, the important thing to note there is you're getting different antioxidants. So with the um, extra virgin olive oil, as you guys would probably know, you're getting a whole range of phenols such as hydroxytyrosol, tyrosol and oleocanthal. And then with the olive leaf tea, you're getting um, also hydroxytyrosol, but you're also getting oleuropine, which doesn't really come through in the extra virgin olive oil. So it's a really nice way to complement um, the two products together to get the full benefits of the olive tree, if you like. Good work, yeah. Um, so you yeah, we might just there's a, a question there around um, the, how the products will be getting sent to the stores and things like that. But I might pass that over to the gentleman when we get to the section around uh, the samples being sent through. So we'll, we'll definitely touch on that. So just moving on to the next slide, Abby. So we'll talk about um, now the Olive Wellness Institute. So it's a little bit of an interlude, but the reason I wanted to introduce this now is this is a really a unique resource that's available to you all to be using. Um, at your own leisure. It's a resource that um, Boundary Band Limited, so our company, initiated in April of this year. But it's a fully independent resource, so it's backed by some funding in Australia through some government sort of type funding, and also backed by a fully independent advisory panel. And so everything on the Institute, although um, created by Boundary Band Limited, doesn't promote specific brands. So it's a really nice way for you to learn about all the products in a very non-biased, non-commercial way, where there's no sort of conflict of interest but also a great thing that you can share with your customers where they can go and learn more about all of these different products, including extra virgin olive oil. That's our mission there. So, um, you know, we all know in this current world there's a lot of um, hype around different health products, particularly things like coconut or turmeric or things that are chia perhaps, things that definitely do have some health benefits, but I guess the, um, the small amount of evidence pertaining to those products has been really well amplified throughout the world. And we think that um, olives or the olive tree perhaps hasn't been given the best shot at that. So the Olive Wellness Institute is really an initiative to try and bring everybody with um, a passion and interest in the health benefits of anything coming from the olive tree and sharing that out um, with the community. So we encourage you to take a look at that. Um, and I just wanted to take you through some of the things that we share on that website relating to olive leaf and the olive leaf tea. I will slightly touch on olive leaf extract and I just want to preface the information with we're very lucky and fortunate with extra virgin olive oil that there's a plethora of um, many thousands of years of history and some really strong science to support the health benefits. With the olive leaf products, there isn't as much, but there still is some really good evidence around the health benefits. And most of that evidence does actually sit in the olive leaf extract product. But we can always look at that and really relate that to the tea because it's still coming from the olive leaf. There isn't a huge amount of clinical research on the olive leaf itself in a tea form, but we can really pull from the evidence relating to the extract. So I've kind of blended it in here for you to take a look. Uh, now Tim's talked around the, you know, the, the white antioxidant profile, and I just um, mentioned how it really well complements the, um, the oil's antioxidant profile. And here we can just see in the second dot point a really um, a top level overarching list of the main antioxidants that we find in the leaf. And a full list of these are available on the Institute website as well. They are listed in um, almost in level of um, importance or in their quantities found in the leaf. In Bafa, oleoropine and hydroxytyrosol are the two major components that we find in the leaf that do come out very well through the brewed tea and have a myriad of health benefits that we can um, enjoy when consuming this beverage. To move to the next slide, I'll go specifically into some of those um, now. So, there's really three, there's so many benefits linked to olive leaf extract and the olive leaf, but the, the three I really want to focus on today are where the main uh, body of evidence sits. So the first being the antioxidant activity, the second being immunity, and the third being heart. And I'll talk through the levels of evidence for each of those areas and try and provide you with some simplified messages so that when you have customers come to the store or if you're training your staff, you're able to sort of share with them the health benefits of the tea and how that perhaps differs from the oil itself. So the first and the most obvious is the antioxidant capacity of the olive leaf and oleoropine specifically and hydroxytyrosol have been found to be very potent antioxidants. 
There's some um, clinical evidence showing that um, hydroxytyrosol is about 10 times as potent as green tea. That's still to be uh, formally validated, but we know that based on looking at ORAC values or antioxidant assays, that these are very powerful antioxidants. So to pull that right back and for people that perhaps hear the word antioxidant a lot and not necessarily 100% sure what it means, I thought I'd just give a very simplified um, version of our interpretation of an antioxidant. So if you know this already, it can be a bit of a refresher. But we know that every day in our life we're exposed to different types of toxins and that might be in the environment, so through pollution, through UV damage, through the sun. It could be through types of foods that we're eating. Um, it could be emotional or physical stress through exercise. A whole bunch of um, components contribute to the stress that our body is put under every day. And when our body is put under that level of stress, we produce um, compounds or chemicals in our body called reactive oxygen species, which you'll often see um, abbreviated as ROS in a lot of different um, materials. Now these um, reactive oxygen species, or free radicals as they're also known, can be quite damaging to the body. So they can affect all of the different cells in their body, they can affect the way our heart functions and they can contribute overall to the development of disease and inflammation in the body. So that's why it's really important that through our natural diet and through um, natural foods we consume natural antioxidants that are really present in the original fruit or the original leaf to protect that uh, plant or that fruit from degrading and keeping it healthy. When we consume them to our bodies, it does the same thing. So it fights those reactive oxygen species or the free radicals and reduces the damage that they can do to the body. So by consuming products like these, we can try and reduce that burden. And there's a, a fair degree of clinical research showing this, both in humans, um, in animals and in um, laboratory or in, in, in vitro or test tubes, as we say. The second main health benefit I wanted to talk through was immunity. And um, although, unfortunately, there's not a lot of evidence around immunity in a clinical setting, so as it applies to humans, there is a myriad of health benefits, uh, health evidence, sorry, around immunity and um, the olive leaf in a laboratory setting or in an animal setting. So it hasn't gone across to humans, but the, the evidence in, in animals and in vitro is particularly strong, and on the Olive Wellness Institute, we walk through that. And the reason for that immune action of the olive leaf is believed to be because of its strong antimicrobial, antiviral and antifungal activity. So when these nasty bugs or pathogens are entering the body, it's helping to fight those and to stimulate the immune system's response, helping with the white blood cells that are coming in and killing off all of those um, nasty things that are causing disease or illness. And the third one um, that I wanted to focus on, and there's a whole bunch of others that you can review on the website, but the third that has you know, probably the most human clinical evidence and um, animal and, and lab evidence is heart health. And it, it's probably not a surprise to us because we know that extra virgin olive oil is such a uh, fantastic product for heart health with really strong evidence, and the leaf sits in that same domain. So it can help with regulating your lipids or your cholesterol, um, incre increasing the level of healthy cholesterol and reducing the level of not so healthy cholesterol and also just helping the heart function um, in, a, in a normal way. So I've put a link up there for you to have a look at the olive leaf extract page but we've also got an olive leaf tea page so you can see the information there um, and by no means is any of this um, to be interpreted as an implied health claim for the product but just giving yourself the background and knowledge is sometimes helpful when you're explaining to a customer how it differs from the extra virgin olive oil itself. Go to the next slide, thanks, Anne. So what do we know about olive leaf tea? Um, as Tim mentioned, we know it's been traditionally used for a very, very long time. We've got a history infographic on the Institute that really takes us through that evolution of the olive tree and the use of all the different parts. And we know that um, historically they used it for things like common colds or infections or illnesses, so really aligned to that immunity message that we know the leaf extract is so well um, used and known for. As I mentioned, we have some research mainly related to the leaf extract form, but we can look at that and um, you know, lean on that to understand the leaf more um, intricately and understand how it works in the body. And as an institute, we're working on building that body of evidence. So we're constantly working with researchers, with academics, with people from all over the world to build the evidence around the olive leaf. So I guess watch this space and we'll keep you guys abreast of anything that comes out. And here's just a bit of information. So if you do subscribe to the institute, it's almost like a little training portal just for yourselves. It tells you everything you need to know so that when your customers come to the store, you feel really well informed. 
and they can also subscribe. There's a lot of patient resources and customer resources there um, as well. So we really encourage you to, to be part of that. So now we're going to step into looking at the Stone and Grove Olive Leaf Tea range, which your stores will be um, receiving. And um, the way we're going to run this session is Andrew's going to take us through a bit of information about what you'll be receiving, including some of the samples that the stores will be receiving, because I think um, it's really important that you taste, including some of the samples that the stores will be receiving, because I think um, it's really important that you taste and understand the product and be feel confident with it. And then after each one, um, Andrew will talk through tasting notes, and then I'll cover the antioxidants that are in there, so the olive leaf. And then for some of the blends, which contain ingredients, which, as Tim mentioned, are not from our groves, but are very uh, are sourced from very high-quality um, ingredient suppliers, I'll talk through the main sort of health benefits of each of those different parts of the blends to give you that confidence when explaining to customers as well. So over to you, Andrew. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, it was great to be speaking with you all. Uh, we're really, really excited about our olive tea range, uh, Stone and Grove. Um, I really would encourage you to yeah, have a look at uh, the Olive Wellness Institute website. It's just got a plethora of information there on the teas and olive oil, which I think is a hugely valuable uh, resource and, uh, and literally a world for, for us. So well done, Sarah. Uh, there's some great information there. Um, so Stone and Grove, um, we are so pleased. It's literally a world first. Um, you guys will be the first people to be getting the tea, our tea, the Stone and Grove tea in the world. Um, apart from a few family and friends and testing we've done uh, here in Australia, uh, samples are being packed out the back literally as we speak to be shipped off. Um, so what you'll be getting uh, as a sample is, is this little gusset bag here. Uh, and in that gusset bag are two individually wrapped, or two tea bags that are individually wrapped of each of the range in here. So you can take that out and, and use those for, for sampling. Um, so the range will come there in, in a pyramid tea bag there, as you can see on the screen, which is biodegradable. Um, there's 16 tea bags, uh, and they're all packed uh, in this beautiful uh, handcrafted uh, canister here. Um, they are all 16 tea bags uh, of, of the range here. So we've got two, um, an olive leaf tea, uh, and then an olive leaf and green tea, central tea, and then four herbal tisanes, which we'll take you through uh, through in a minute. I think it's important to say, you know, thank you to Veronica Foods for uh, supporting us in this tea. Uh, Veronica Foods have this exclusively uh, around the US in their market. Uh, and we've had some tremendous feedback just on the taste. So we send samples out to people and you know, a few weeks later I'll actually call us and say, look, where can we get this tea? Um, so we just can't get it onto the market quick enough and we really hope you'll enjoy tasting the teas and uh, talking to them and selling them to, uh, to your customers. Um, the, um, the, the recommended retail, as you can see there, is uh, US dollars nine fifty to $10 a canister. And we've also developed a quite stylish uh, and clean and cut uh, carton. So there will be six canisters in the carton there, um, all of, of one of the blends. Uh, and these we've made so you have the flexibility to create in-store displays. So I've got all the information there, uh, a bit of different printing on each side, which uh, tells you what uh, variety or what blend uh, is in the canister there. So you can stack these at the end of rows or on shelves and make a bit of display of what we've uh, tried to do at the back there. Um, each of the, the canisters uh, has the tamper-proof, a colour tamper-proof seal on there, also signifying which, which blend uh, it is there. So yeah, that, that should have some really good shelf presence uh, and customers will be able to relate to the colour coding there to pick up their blend, which they start using as, as their favourite blends. Um, we've also got more uh, under, under development now, apart from the six uh, that you're going to be receiving soon. Uh, we're always working on new flights and tables, and we're really fortunate to um, have you know, one of Australia's leading tea masters uh, here close by in Geelong to help us on, along that journey. So very excited uh, there. Uh, so the samples will be shipped out soon. and uh, They arrived last uh, no, right, Friday. Friday. So they, they those samples will arrive Friday, and it's actually uh, the first order that's been packed out the back uh, as, as we speak. Uh, 
So a quick uh, refresher on, on brewing. Um, this is on all the all the packs, and uh, the other thing I should mention too, you'll also be getting uh, some of these little booklets that we put together, and in these booklets it goes through a lot of the information which we've talked about today, has some really good infographics on it, uh, and also details some of the tasting notes that we're going to go through today, brewing instructions, and um, a little bit of information on each of the blends here. But basically, to, to brew the, the tea there, we don't want boiling hot 100 degree uh, um, uh, boiling water because that can scold some of the botanicals in there and the olive leaf. So usually uh, at about 194 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, we have the water there, so just below boiling, um, put the tea bag in, then the water, uh, and then you can let that steep for anywhere between two and four minutes, depending how um, uh, strong you like your, your, your actual uh, tea there. Thanks, Abby. So Sarah and I will start going, going through uh, the teas now, and we're going to have a little taste and uh, uh, smell of the aroma of each of the, the teas. Uh, the first one we'll look at is the, the olive leaf tea. So this is 100% olive leaf, 100% uh, sourced, sourced from our grove, uh, is caffeine free. Um, you can see here it is, you know, quite a sort of you know light green colour. This has been steeping now for a couple of minutes. Um, and it's uh, very well there. It's the aroma is, you know, as you would expect, very herbaceous. Uh, you know, the green leaves, and it uh, has a nice sort of refreshing, herbaceous sort of tang to it. And quite a bit, depending how long you leave the tea bag, is there's a bit of bitterness on the on the side of the mouth there. Um, unlike olive oil, you know, we don't get that, that pungency of the camphor there, we don't get that in the back of the throat. Um, but it is a really refreshing mushroom, just packed with, uh, with antioxidants and those immune boost boosting properties there. So that's a very you know, easy drinking tea. Sometimes you might not want to let that steep too long or it will get you know, quite, quite strong. But it has a bit of sort of bitterness and astringency, but a quite balanced out though, so it's quite easy drinking. So, well, yeah, I'm going to talk about tasting, even though it's not mine. <laughs> but I just sort of think of it like, um, and Tim was saying this yesterday, as the more robust extra version olive oil. So your customer who really likes that strong, robust flavour, you save it for that for four minutes. For somebody who is, you know, wants a, a bit of a less yeah. strong flavour. But if you're a green tea drinker, um, you'd love it, oh, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so then on the next slide, I'm just going to take you through for each of them the health benefits. And so because all of them have olive leaf, I'm just going to re rehash some of the stuff I just spoke about recently on the olive leaf benefits. And then obviously I've got a reminder on each of the blend slides that obviously this is the most important act aspect of each of them because I believe it's, is it about 40 to 60 percent of our product is the, in the blends. Yeah. Yeah. So we're always seeing a most of, most of the blend being um, made up of um, our herb. So the whole attributes that we spoke through with the leaf just to rehash those, are the powerful antioxidants. So you can talk to customers around how there's evidence that sort of shows it's you know, stronger than green tea in terms of its antioxidant capacity. Um, heart health, and we discussed how it just maintains uh, the heart working in a, in a good working fashion and also helps with some of the blood fats and blood lipids. And then immunity, um, really great, especially in the winter months, but just to help keep that immune system tracking along nicely. So for that one, that's all I'll focus on. And for the rest of the blends, I'll talk through some of the other ingredients so that we can get a bit of an understanding of how the blend was put together. Okay, so the next one we're going to go to, thanks Abby, is our olive leaf made with premium green tea uh, sourced again from Australia. Um, so this tea here, you can see, is a little bit more vibrant in, our, in, in its colour there. And, you know, just with the green tea and the Australian olive is just packed with, uh, with antioxidants there. Um, it's you know, bright in, bright in colour. It has, you know, that, those real green notes, obviously, from the, the olive leaf and the, the green tea. Um, but it has that sort of, you know, soothing, sort of grassy olive leaf notes. Um, to taste that tea, it's, it's, it's perhaps more delicate than you would think. Um, it's, it's very easy drinking. Again, the green tea, it does take out a little bit of the bitterness, I think, uh, of the straight olive leaf tea. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's very easy drinking. It's quite refreshing on the palate. It leaves your mouth, you know, really clean. 
Um, and it's a, it's a, you know, you can literally feel the goodness of those antioxidants soaking into you. A very easy drinking uh, tea there. Thanks, Abby. And so again, as I've just mentioned for the last blend, we've got those top three, the antioxidant, heart health and immunity. And then we've got the addition of the green tea, which is very well known, powerful antioxidant and just a really nice health and wellness tonic. So together the two create really powerful blends um, that somebody can drink on a daily basis. And it's probably a nice little mix up from just having the green tea by itself for the flavour profile, but also because you're getting a different variety of antioxidants to try and work on those free radicals um, that are in the body. So we might move on to the next one. There's a few more herbs in the next lot that I'll go through as well. Okay, so this is our immunity. Mm. It's energy. Yeah, it's energy. Our it's tea master, Timothy, is just brewing over here. There's our immunity. We've got immunity. Thank you, Tim. There's our immunity. We could have changed the slide, Tim, to make it easier for you. Yes. We've gone out of sync. Sink. Yeah. So... If you can bring that. Okay, yep. let, let's go back to the, can we switch to the detox slide? Yeah, we'll start with it. Yeah, let's we'll let that this one sit for a bit. Yeah, this, this, is, this is all brilliant. Yep. Uh, so this one here, you can see it's that sort of, you know, honey, yellow uh, taste there, um, colour there, the honey yellow. Uh, there, which uh, is, is is very appealing, it sort of you know, it looks you know, really refreshing in the cup there. And again, it has that sort of you know well balanced. It's got those citrus tones in it. This this tea, um, very um, earthy. You know, I almost get sort of rainforest when you're walking through the rainforest. You get those sort of rainforest leaves in there. So you know, very earthy, earthy type, humid type tea. Um, Mm. So that's you know, really smooth. It's an easy drinking tea. It's got a bit of sort of rhubarb uh, notes in there, some citrus tones. Um, it's more citrus peel than, than, than citrus um, uh, fruit. Um, and it's very refreshing on the palate. Again, these teas leave your, your mouth really clean and refreshing. Uh, it's balanced and you, you do, you feel refreshed when you have, um, have one of those teas there. And I might just say, you know, a lot of these teas uh, we found really, really suited to serving as a chill drink as well, letting it go go cold, um, or even refrigerating it and uh, serving it chilled. They work really, really yeah, well. Yeah. So, yes, obviously, look, this is called detox. Okay. One so of the reasons that, that's, that's for sale. <laughs> at the top, we've got just the three, again, I'll be olive leaf, but I thought I'd just sort of take you through the rest of the stuff in the blend. Now, just prefacing this with, if these are not implied health claims for the product, they're again information for you to feel more confident when discussing the blends with your customers or with your staff. So the main um, aspects of the tea that really allow it to be a detox tea, if you like, um, are the licorice root, which is really good, again, for immunity. Um, it does help with the lipids, so it can have a detox detoxification effect with, with the lipids, and also really great for women's health. So we'll see the licorice appear in the women's health blend as well. We have St. Mary's thistle, which is uh, known as a liver herb. So, um, you know, traditionally people take St. Mary's thistle as a supplement to detoxify the liver, so it's in there as well. As calendula, which has antimicrobial activity, again, having that detoxifying action. There's some general wellness ones that we'll see in most of the blends that just really have that um, evidence around, um, you know, the general health and wellness for the body and, and supporting the body's uh, normal functions. And I will say the slides will be available for you at the end of the presentation. We'll be sending around a link of this recording and the slides. So if you can't see the details because it's too small, you would definitely be getting that. It also contains um, the lemon peel and lemon verbena. So these products with the lemon base have been really um, shown to help with digestion. So in terms of the gastrointestinal detox, they've got strong um, evidence to support that. Uh, red clover, again, another one that's quite good for women's health and detoxification in terms of um, hormonal levels, and then um, burdock, which is quite good for skin health, so it might help with cleansing and keeping the skin nice and clear. And just to, to again, remind us that this is a blend with these being quite minor components in the blend. So overall, the best benefit to explain to your customer is that it's a blend of specific, specifically selected herbs that have been shown to detoxify the body in all different areas. Um, and then you can go down to a couple of them if you feel confident speaking through those um, as well. 
So we're going to go to energy. We're yeah. going to yep. get to energy. Yep. Look, this this is um, this is one of my favourites. Uh, you can see that beautiful hibiscus pink or red in the in the in the colour there that, that, that that's come out. Uh, the hibiscus and the calendula uh, in this thing. This tisane is uh, is called energy. And it's got really sort of floral citrus notes. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, really tangy. Um, it's just, uh, you know, really stimulating to either look at, um, to taste and, and to smell. It's got those, you know, really well-balanced floral notes. You can sort of feel you know, red roses in there as well. Um, some citrus notes. Um, it's quite tangy. Uh, and again, you know, nice, easy drinking, well balanced uh, tea. Um, I think the colour on this, you know, really stands out mm -hmm. and differentiates it from the rest. But it's a great everyday tea, and this tea is also really well served to serving chilled yeah. uh, as a you know, little bit of an energy drink and a pick me up. Um, really uh, a very nice tea. Why is it so energy? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one to have instead of that second coffee. Yes. Yeah, that's what I use it for. Um, so again, the energy to saying or to san it contains the three um, main benefits of the olive leaf. But it also contains, probably the most important one is the uh, bottom one on the left hand side, the yerba mate, which is a herb that's been shown to actually help with um, energy production or giving you a bit more um, up and go if you like. and, and that helps. It's almost. It's not a caffeine product. There are traces of caffeine in this tea, we should say. But the energy coming from the yoga mate is a very natural form of energy, and the traces of caffeine would be very similar to what you find in, say, an English breakfast tea or a normal black tea that you'd find on the market. Um, some other things that are contained within that um, blend are Siberian ginseng, which has also got powerful effects for our immunity. Um, orange peel, again having effects with immunity, but being a really rich source of vitamin C. Uh, rose hips, which gives it, I think that's no, a hibiscus that gives it the beautiful red yeah, colour, which yeah. is um, funny that it's red because it also contributes to the um, heart health as well oh, okay. and gives you um, extra energy through that. Um, rose hips, again, a strong antioxidant and a very rich source of vitamin C, A, B3, D and E, so a very important herb. Um, and lemongrass and chicory, again, being those general wellness herbs that are contained within the blend. Thanks, Abby. Immunity there, can we... Uh, we'll just go back to immunity, so excuse the slide switch. So this also has, you know, some beautiful sort of rose petal pink colours. I don't know whether you can pick those up there with the, with the camera. Um, not quite as vibrant as the as the energy drink, but, you know, nice rose petal uh, uh, colours there. Um, this... this I think the overwhelming thing is that is the, is the mint. Uh, it's got sort of flesh floral thing, um, notes, uh, the mint taste. It's also got you know, a bit of lemongrass aroma in that as, as well. Again, you know, really light, easy drinking, clean, refreshing finish on the back of the palate. Um, very nice. But, yeah, I think the overwhelming... Um, Taste in this tea is the, is the rose petals and that floral yeah. um, aroma that it has. And I think, you know, at the end, the spearmint there, you know, it leaves your mouth really clean and re refreshed with that spearmint. I think that's what that does. So, again, really well suited to serving as a chilled tea. Um, and how about the yeah. for this one? So I should just also mention that some of the herbs in there, um, you know, are there in very small amounts to help with the flavour as well. So although you know, they might not all be immunity herbs, um, the herbs are in there to help with the flavour, but also the herbs work uh, very well together. Um, you know, like if we think of um, the antioxidants in the olive leaf, they work well together to work, help each other work better. So some of the herbs are in there for that purpose as well. Um, with the immunity blend, it contains echinacea, which I'm sure everybody's quite familiar with, a very um, well-known um, herb to help with um, stimulating or um, supporting the immune system. Again, licorice root and Siberian ginseng. Our lemongrass is in there for general wellness, but also to help with some of the flavour, because echinacea can be quite a bitter herb. I'm not sure if anyone's tasted fresh echinacea um, liquid. It's very, very bitter. So to help blend out that bitterness of the olive leaf, and particularly the echinacea, the lemongrass is there. Um, the spearmint, yes, for flavour, but also the antimicrobial action, which helps with the immunity effects. Again, rose hips, which we covered earlier. 
Again, mainly that is there for flavour, but can be helpful with immunity in terms of particularly that rich source of vitamin C and D. Uh, ginger as an antioxidant, and we know that's quite a soothing um, substance to have when you're not feeling well with a, with a cold or a flu, a flu. and hibiscus of it, and then again to support the heart health, which is really important that your heart's functioning well when you're trying to overcome or prevent um, some sort of cold or flu. The last one's women's health, I think. Last one is, is women's health. Uh, men can also drink this tea. It is, you know, I think, my second favourite tea after the energy, so uh, certainly um, don't be afraid to sell this to men. Um, but yes, this, again, is very a very aromatic tea, very um, easy drinking. It has that sort of, again, honey or really light toffee uh, colour to it. Um, and again, huge sort of, floral aromas. Um, if this was an olive oil, it would uh, it'd get a very high fruity score. Uh, again, that, those rose, pe rose petal, deep, sort of deep floral. It's a, it's a, a different floral there than the, than the previous teas. Um, I think it's the metal in that that sort of, you know, changes yeah. that. They're all very different. Yeah, it changes. Yeah. They're all very different teas. Yeah. Mm, and again, yeah. It's a really uh, moist, short yeah, taste, great, easy yeah. drinking, and yeah, makes you feel good straight yeah. away, that, that, that tea, very warming, sort of goodness in a cup type tea. Uh, so again, yeah, mainly floral the, the, is yeah. the main way I describe the taste of that a lot. And oh, this tea. <laughs> tea. Yeah. Um, again, the women's health has got the, the olive leaf, obviously. The nettle that um, Andrew mentioned is there. It's, it's a general wellness kind of herb as well. Got the licorice root in there. We saw earlier that helps with immunity, also heart and cholesterol health or lipid health in the body, and also particularly for women's health in terms of you know hormones and balancing those out. Um, ginger, a really nice antioxidant. Ginger can be a little bit, um, can help with a bit of nausea as well, so it can help with that. Um, but there's probably not enough to have a, a huge impact on that, but it can be soothing for somebody who's feeling a little bit um, nauseous. In pregnancy, you might just want to check with their doctor if it's um, okay for them to be using it. It should be fine, but always best to double check. Um, and then chamomile, which is a really calming, um, calming herb. With the chamomile levels that are in the tea, it's not really that much that it would send you to sleep, but it might be a really nice one for somebody to have just before bed um, to try and help soothe them and calm them before going to bed. Women and men can have it for that fact. <laughs> um, and that's all we have on that. So we'd like to bring Tim, uh, Tim back in. Tim's been our master brewer off to the side. They're brewing all the, uh, the, the teas expertly for us. I only stuffed up one. So couldn't be too bad. Thanks, Sarah and Andrew. That was terrific. And um, as Sarah mentioned, Sarah's a um, um, health guru within our team and also um, is in the US from time to time with, uh, with the Olive Wellness Institute. So... Um, if ever want to bump into Sarah, please um, please reach out and she would be happy to come and say hello, um, I'm sure. Um, Andrew also didn't really explain himself, but he was one of the first people I started working at Boundary Bend and joined the company in about 1999, I think, and set up the nursery and then our bottling operations and more, um, is one of Australia's foremost tea, uh, sorry, olive oil um, tasters and judges and as you can see now, is one of our leading uh, tea tasting experts as well. So um, he's got a great palate, and thanks to Andrew for that enlightening um, tea tasting there. And, um, just a couple of things to wrap up. We're, we're about done here, but um, as Andrew mentioned, Veronica Foods have this product exclusively in the US. We, um, we're ex really excited to be bringing it to, um, to you all through Veronica Foods, and the product's available. Um, our first shipment arrives over in the US um, around about uh, next week. I think it's scheduled to arrive. So um, please keep in touch with uh, with the team at Veronica and if you're interested in ordering some of the products, they've got all the details and can make that happen. Um, we've got a website that's uh, that's about to launch, um, stoneandgrove.com um, is the URL. The live date will be about the 1st of November and we'll continue to build onto that site over time. Um, we've got a um, social media um, initiative which will focus on Instagram. Um, the handle's at the bottom of the page there. And focus on Instagram. Um, the handle's at the bottom of the page there. And uh, social media will actually kick off next week. Um, so if there's anything specific to the stores that you'd like to 
um, have included on the social handle, please, um, please uh, link us in with your posts or hashtag us and um, we'll make sure that that gets included or mentioned there. Um, finally, um, we're going to run a sales competition for the tea. Um, the dates have actually changed since um, this presentation was put together, um, so it's going to be a bit later in, uh, early in the new year. And the, uh, the prize for the top selling store will be a trip for two people down to our olive oil harvest in Australia, which will be in May 2019. Um, you speak to the people at Veronica Foods and they'll be able to give you all the details on the updated dates, but um, really we're trying to encourage people to jump on board and support the teas. And uh, if you're lucky enough to sell a heap and be the winner, we'd love to see you down here in, in May. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, pretty much a wrap from us. We're really grateful for you all joining. Um, we've been sitting here talking to the wall for an hour, so, <laughs> so hopefully there's someone on the other end. But um, if anyone's got any questions, please fire them through on the messaging. Otherwise, um, feel free to reach out any time. Um, Leah or Arata can help you with any information and they can pass it through to us if they've got any questions. And if you need any help or support or ideas or anything about uh, olive leaf tea or anything else to do with olives, Please feel free to reach out and thank you again for joining in and uh, happy selling. Thank you. And as, um, as we mentioned earlier, we'll be sending the recording link for this and the slides around. So I don't think we've been getting any um, questions through, but um, if you want to pop them in now, we'll hang around for the next few minutes, but you can leave if, you, <laughs> if you're finished with us. Um, but if you've got any questions after the fact, certainly channel them through, through our radar or Leo, and then we'll be able to um, help you out. So we'll hang around, but feel free to um, leave now. Just in case you've got any questions, we'll just wait. Thanks very much. We stopped the recording. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just down the Sorry, that's the tea.